But this is where all the business is done. This is where the horsepower is found in the top end. Uh, one of the things we're going to do is uh, take this out to a full 250 cc's. Welcome to Twist Grip Tales and uh, g'day Aaron. G'day Bruce. What a great day we've had today. Big day. We've had this little Brap ST250 on the dyno. Yep. Now we've discovered what it'll actually do. A surprising amount of horsepower and enthusiasm. But now it's time to find out what the possibilities are inside this beast. I haven't seen inside here, have you? Not yet. We've seen similar, but anyway, now is the time. We're going to pull this engine apart and, uh, and have a look inside and show you what the possibilities are for improving the performance to get us to world's fastest BRAP, the fastest Mo stash in the world. Let's see if we can break an Australian, a world land speed record. Let's see what we've got to do. Aaron, take it away. All right, so let's have a rundown of today. We went to the dyno, we ran the bike up, went well. The ignition didn't have any ignition breakdowns or anything. It was pretty good. Come out with some good numbers. Uh, we pulled the motor out of the bike, which was pretty easy. Nothing stressful. Five bolts. Five bolts and it was out. And here we are with the engine. And we're going to pull it apart and see what we got. And then we'll, yeah, go further on. We'll measure and then work out what modifications we can do. So, yeah, let's start. First of all, we'll pull the top cover off. So basically three 10 mil bolts. We'll pull the top cover off. We got three 10 mil bolts, six mil thread. So we'll pull them off. One. So the top cover's off. Three bolts, and this is where the oil cooler connects, this one here. Also, you can check oil pressure. With that bolt. With the back bolt here. If you're concerned about oil pressure, you can start the motor up, take the eight mil bolt out, check for oil pressure at the top end. Next, we're gonna take the rocker gear off. So we'll do that. So we've got three 12 mil bolts. Bolts. I've done a fair few of these, so when you pull these off, First time you do them, you get a bit scared that you're going to drop the push rods into the motor, which can happen, but not it's not that easy to do. So, there you go. There's your rocker gear off the top. This has actually got a bigger rocker gear than the last motor I pulled apart. Very good. It's a bit more solid, this one. So what I do is I just basically I just grab the push rods like that, pull them straight out. So I basically I pinch them and I just slide them straight out together. So they're the push rods, 250, intake and exhaust, both the same length. So the push rods take the energy from the cam, which uh, lifts these up and down, and the rocker gear then rock over and open the valves at the appropriate time. So this is what transmits the power from down below to up top to open and close the valves to make the engine run. Very important. They're just like in a V8. Next, we'll take the spark plug out, just so we don't break the spark plug off. Standard spark plug. So next, we've exposed the, the basically the head, inside the head. Uh, so next, we'll take the head off the motor. We'll do that. So we have four 14 mil, well oh, this one's got 12 mil, 12 mil this one, 
Okay, so we're going to do the head bolts next. You've got to be very careful that you don't snap the studs. Now in, in this part of the head here, this is where the oil comes up into the rocker car, into here. This is what lubricates the rocker gear through the, through the top of the cover. There's two squirters in the top. So you gotta be careful when you put the rock cover back on that the seal is sealing on the cover. Or you won't have oil pressure in the top. There's one bolt in the side. I'll rotate the motor. This bolt here. So we undo this bolt here. Now, when you pull these top bolts out, you gotta make sure you get the washer. There's been a couple of these motors put together and they haven't got oil pressure in the top because of the washer covering the hole. Nice chrome bolt. It's actually got a bit of sealer around that one. I've never seen the sealer on them before. Make sure you grab the washers. Right, so now the head bolts are out. We're gonna give it a little bit of a wiggle. These heads come off pretty easy. We'll give it a little bit of a tap. You don't really need to that much, but we will. Okay, so that's the head. Now this motor's only done four kilometers from brand new. So I'd expect it to be pretty nice. Didn't get too much of a hard time on the dyno. So yeah. So which, one's the, which one's the inlet valve? This is the inlet valve here. On the inlet side, carburetor side. And this is the exhaust side. Okay, so we've got a couple of, they've donated us a couple of heads. This head looks slightly different in the chamber. So, so we've got double valve springs from the factory. It's in gear. So we've just brought the piston up. We've just given it the kickstarter, just a bit of a push. So the piston will go down and it will come up. The bore is like brand new, which you would expect. So that's the bore inside. So that's the bore and the piston. Still see the cross hatching. I said this motor is four kilometers old. It's like brand new in there, which is good. So this top gasket will just come off. Head gasket? Yeah. Yep, head gasket. There's a couple of dowels, they can come off. Right, so next we're going to take the cylinder off. So to take the cylinder off, there's two 8mm bolts on the side here. This just pinches the cylinder down. So we'll grab a 8. OK, 
Okay, so the two chrome eight mil bolts. Yep. Okay, so this is a cylinder. Pistons down at the moment. This will just push up. So I use my thumbs on the top and I'll just bring it up. So when you do a big bore kit, this is basically the cylinder. You would have an oversized cylinder. So this would be as far as you need to pull the engine apart to do a big bore kit. And you'd basically slip on your new big bore kit on the smaller size motors. This is a 250, this is about as big as they get. But on the smaller 125s, you can do a 150cc kit, which is very common. So yeah, that's basically the, the cylinder. Now in here, This is basically what actuates your off the camshaft to your push rods. Now to remove these, we don't, we don't have to remove these now, but we can if you like. You basically, you unwind this. Okay, so that's the piston and it's pretty much brand new. Flat top piston. Flat top piston. Tiny little cutaways. You see the cutaways for the valves? In, it's got an inlet, so you can't really turn it around the wrong way when you assemble it. Crank it over a bit, Bruce. Without losing a finger, yep. Okay, so we just wound the motor, that's top dead center. And it's got a uh, friction coating on, the, on, the, sides, uh, on yep. the sides. It's a very, it's a nice little piston, actually. It is. Slipper piston. Lightweight. So this is a friction material here to help it uh, slide uh, more easily. And it's, uh, yeah, that, that's only found in high performance pistons. So it's, uh, it's really, really good. And you'll see the rings here, the, the, uh, the compression rings that help keep the, uh, the, expand, the explosion in the cylinder they're very very narrow which is uh, which is good that means they're very efficient and at sealing and a very lovely little oil control ring to keep the oil down below and uh, that's looking that's looking very helpful looking very racy just give it a little bit of a wipe okay so to get the piston off the conrod we're going to take the side clips out Gonna be a bit hard to show you that. Yep. Okay. So I basically get some pointy nose pliers, and that's the clip holds the gudgeon in. Stops the gudgeon from coming out. So it's a bit hard working like this, but we'll give it a go. So I get some pointy noses. Okay, so I basically get the pointy nose pliers. I grab it in that part of the ring. And I basically turn it around and, it, and reduce the size of it and pick it out. Okay. So next to get the piston off, they can be a bit stubborn, these. I don't want to play the game too easy. Doesn't want to come out. You're going to hate me, but sometimes you got to hit them. Okay, a little bit of a tap. It's quite tight, this fresh motor. Okay, very carefully. Gudge and pin, hollow. So piston's off. You see the inlet. Oh. Exhaust yeah. side. Maybe, maybe you need to put a 
point. Okay, so basically that's the motor stripped. Well, that's what you call stripping the top end. You can see the heat treatment in the Conrod. It's quite nice. Uh, now, the camshaft, being this is a unique motor with a single lobe camshaft for intake and exhaust, you can see the cam lobe in here. So we're going to do a custom grind cam for our motor. And we'll probably build the whole motor around the camshaft, I'd say. That's a good thing, yes. Uh, a lot of old Harleys used to have one cam to operate the inlet and exhaust. Aerial motorcycles had a single cam motor that operated the inlet and exhaust. Um, it's just one of those things. It's a bit quirky, but it's been used for many, many years. Even in 2021. So later on, we'll show you a strip down of the rest of the motor. And, uh, but this is where all the business is done. This is where the horsepower is found in the top end. Uh, one of the things we're going to do is uh, take this out to a full 250 cc's, which is uh, going to be adding uh, a slightly bigger bore, three mil bigger bore to bring it out to 250 cc's and slightly bigger piston to match it and uh, a lumpy camshaft to have it breathing a little bit better, uh, a little bit of porting in the head, yep. get, uh, get more gas in, get more bang out, and, um, and we'll see how we go from there. Put it back on the dyno and see what we've done. Yep, make sure our modifications work. And yeah, hopefully we hit our target and we're gonna give it a real good crack. This is what we'll be dreaming about and having nightmares about over the next few weeks. So watch us as we... Well, next we're gonna measure up the uh, components. We're gonna check the compression ratio of the standard motor just to make sure it is accurate. And then we're gonna work out how we're gonna get our compression up and make everything work and make sure we have nice clearance for our valves to the pistons and the air, all that stuff. All the measuring, Play-Doh, Whatever we have to do to make it right, we will. We will. To make it go fast. To be the world's fastest motorcycle, the world's fastest brup, and set an Australian land speed record. Can we do it? Gosh, I hope so. We're going to give it a go. We're going to give it a go. Don't forget to watch, subscribe, and follow us as uh, this man works his magic. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. And uh, we see where we're going to go next. Good fun. Some measuring.